I am going to start with a poll. Uh, it's asking which of the following is a use case of AI in cybersecurity. And as you may have already guessed, this is a rhetorical question because there isn't the place for you to answer the question. The answer is that all of these are already existing use cases of AI for cybersecurity. And what it proves is that AI is in use in cybersecurity. However, with the rise of generative AI over the last one year, AI has come to public consciousness or notice and started growing even faster. Unfortunately, with this, uh, with these new AI techniques, it has started growing faster, but it has also become a double-edged sword. And I say that because earlier, most of the AI was used by cybersecurity defenders to protect us from cyber attacks, most of it. And not that the adversaries were not using, but it wasn't easy for them to use. But with generative AI, as you saw in some of the earlier sessions and probably witnessed on your own in various videos you observed on YouTube, now AI can be used by adversaries to create new attacks, uh, to find out new vulnerabilities in web pages and to do various other things. So that's why it has become a double-edged sword for us. Now, what does this mean for us? Before I go and start explaining about what it means, I want to also bring all of us on the same page. Mm -hmm. Many people are coming into this from various angles. So my lightning talk will talk about, will go over why AI is important, why it matters, and it's, how its role may change in cybersecurity in the future. But before I do that, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. So I found this visual, uh, which shows how these various terms, NLP, ML, AI, deep learning are interrelated. And many of these are used interchangeably. Uh, what is interesting, which I learned over the period, and by the way, I found this in a book called Practical Machine Learning with Python. Uh, which I picked up about nine months ago to learn how to use AI ML. What I learned is ML models are predominantly in three different categories, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforced models, uh, learning models. And generative AI and new AI techniques are mostly in supervised models. So it's not net new thing. It's something which we already had, it's just that the application of it is growing now. Now with any technology, there are developers or people, technologists who develop the technology and then there are adopters or the users who use that technology. That's true with AI as well. And as you witnessed with the earlier slide or question, um, AI is already in use in cybersecurity. It's beyond initial stages. The growth rate is very high, but at the same time, it's already existing. And the scope is very vast because you can use it for doing various types of cybersecurity use cases. On the, on the contrary, the security for AI, which is in the right-hand side uh, column of the table, it's something which is new and it's in initial stages and it has actually grown significantly in the last one year because of large language models as well as generative AI and other AI techniques. I found during my research that somebody, I think it was a large analyst company. This was something I found in a Harvard Business Review article. They projected that the intersection of AI and cybersecurity will grow from just $4 billion in 2017 to manifold in about $35 billion in 2025. Now, I believe that this is still understatement by the way, because at that time we didn't know how AI will evolve and generative AI applications will increase. So I feel this is still an understatement. It would probably be more than this. Now, what does this mean for all of us? Right, That's probably what is most important. And on this slide, you can see various um, outcomes you can achieve using AI techniques. So you can detect anomalies, you can find vulnerabilities, you can generate new code, 
you can expedite attack. You can also insert yourself in the middle and figure out what's happening. You can poison the data if you are an adversary. With generative AI and other techniques, what has happened is um, the middle section, which is the techniques which can be used or outcomes which can be achieved are now available both for defenders as well as adversaries. And you can see that from the growth of some of these things in um, recent past. And if you notice, some vendors have recently announced, actually you, this week only, that they are inserting AI-based security capabilities into their products. And they match in some of those blocks which are there in the middle. But what is yet unknown and would be interesting to find out is how AI or can AI create new cybersecurity solutions to solve some existing problems or new problems? Uh, that would be an interesting thing to watch. Uh, on the other hand, it would be interesting to see whether AI can create some new ad advanced persistent threats or threats which may create different set of problems for us. Now, again, when I say it would be interesting to find, I am saying this because I am a cybersecurity professional who would like to protect our digital way of life and work, uh, but knowing this would help me prevent them from happening at workplace or at our homes, right? While we are uh, living our digital lives. Now, with generative, as generative AI is new and it will bring new challenges with it, it's possible that the scope of security for AI may change. However, there are already established security disciplines like data security, cloud security, software supply chain security, which cover most of the aspects for AI. For example, if you are secure, if you want to secure the training data for AI, you would use the discipline of data security. If you are trying to secure the software which you are going to use to build AI systems, you would, it would fall under software supply chain security. And there are tools available for that already. Uh, if you are trying to secure the systems that are used to deploy AI in cloud environment or on-prem environment, you would use constructs which are already established in application security or cloud security. But having said that, I also know that every time a new technology comes, it also brings in some new platforms for securing that technology end to end. And that has happened in the past in cybersecurity. For example, when the SaaS apps came into picture, CASB came as a new uh, sort of security solution, end to end security solution for that type of application or that type of technology. Same happened with the cloud. When cloud came into four, um, cloud security solutions came into picture. It's possible that with AI, new end-to-end -end AI security solution may come into picture. And again, this is my point of view. It's based on what I have seen happening in cybersecurity world. It is only one point of view. It can be proven wrong. So we'll see how it evolves. But at the same time, um, although this, intersection is evolving very fast. I already noticed that there are existing efforts and frameworks already in place. And people from all walks of life as well as cybersecurity space are trying to solve the problem or trying to provide guidance to solving problems. And maybe this is something you can go look at if you are a cybersecurity professional or AI professional. So there are some links which are provided here on the right hand side. There are threat libraries, there are risk management frameworks, there are best practices, guides, and even security standards which are getting established. So I would recommend you go and look at these uh, at your leisure. There are also AI bill of rights because it's possible that AI may disrupt the digital lives uh, because it can create content, video, audio, or images about you without you knowing about it, right? So the White House has also established that. Now. All of this is takeaway, but if you are a cybersecurity professional or AI technologist or somebody else, here is what you can do, I would say. If you're an AI technologist, uh, which many of you are, I would recommend learn and understand how your technology will affect cybersecurity or people's ethical, legal, or security boundaries. And then try to work with cybersecurity professionals to uh, build solutions for that.
if you are a cyber security professional i would recommend you playing with ai i have done that in last one year a lot and learned quite a bit and figured out that you can actually use ai to defend a lot more than what you could do earlier uh, so play with ai learn how it can be used by attackers as well as by defenders and then create solutions for uh, addressing some of these problems and if you are both you can do both and if you are neither which is everyone else i would recommend learning about ai implications such as ethical uh, bias legal because we want all of this to be in the space but at the same time be legally bounding in a way that we don't disrupt our digital lives and work because of that so do that and then uh, you can probably contribute to the ai space uh, last thing i would say is this train has already left the station and it's moving very fast so we need everybody's help so thanks for thanks to sans for organizing this and thanks to other um speakers as well as technologists and professionals who are trying to contribute to this